Back in the day when the big three were still around, I remember always trying to consume any sort of manga that I could sink my teeth into. I was relatively young, I young at the time, but I wanted something other than Naruto, Bleach, or One Piece to appease my easily entertained mind. I would go through the internet looking through all sorts of manga lists, seeing if anything would catch my interest. Then I saw Blue Exorcist. It was a simple name, but its simplicity intrigued me, and when I read through it I was instantly hooked. I read everything that was available at the time, and right around that time the anime also got greenlit, and I already knew that I was going to be hyped to start watching it when it would come out. The story, while not the most unique, was compelling to me at the time, and the art style was also really good on the eyes as well. And this is where I mention Kazue Kato, a Japanese manga artist and the author for Blue Exorcist. Usually, I would show any books that I have from her, but since I just moved, most of my things are in the storage unit, so I literally have no access to them at the moment. But I do own volumes 1 through 12 of Blue Exorcist, as well as her Euro Era art book. Even if you're not a fan of the story, I do recommend checking out her art book, if nothing else, just to see her amazing illustrations. As I mentioned before, she is a manga artist, but she's one of the very few that incorporates both traditional and digital methods in her workflow, usually penciling and inking traditionally, while coloring digitally. With that being said, I'll start with talking about her illustrative work first, and then her inked work after, while taking note of any techniques and things that I find interesting. It probably goes without saying, but with a title called Blue Exorcist, you can expect a lot of blue tones being used, and Kazue Kato uses them masterfully. By using a digital means of coloring, she's not limited in the hue, value, or saturation, and in ordinary cases, not being limited in your palette can actually lead to poor uses of color, but she obviously has a good grip on color theory. When coloring, it is important to know that everything is relative. You usually wouldn't find two highly saturated hues from opposite sides of the color wheel in an illustration for no reason. You can get away with it if you're a painter like Ishida Sui that goes straight up bananas with it. Since the protagonist, Rin, utilizes blue fire, you have to keep in mind that not only is it going to be a constant light source, all color relative to the flame is going to be affected. And you can see in these pieces that she understands that concept really well. Another food for thought is that shadows are usually a cool tone, so you can expect the shadows to be in a blue hue as well. Keep in mind though that this isn't an unbreakable rule, artist liberties can always be taken. In the pieces in which the main cast of characters are present for, it always has such a nice wholesome and festive feeling. Whether it's because of the costumes that they wear or the setting that they're in, it really feels like that these guys are a really good group of friends, and other times when they put on their game faces, it really feels cool and intense. In these illustrations, the colors she uses are very saturated, but they are surprisingly never an eyesore. In fact, they really add to the character designs, and speaking of character designs, in a story in which demons, religion, and Eastern Asian culture is touched upon, the designs really mix well. Usually, when I look at an artist's art style, I would like to be able to immediately discern who the artist is, not just from their painting, but also from their line work, and for Kazue Kato, it checks out perfectly. There's no one else that draws like her. One thing that I did notice that she does really well is facial expressions. When a character looks mad, they look very mad. mad. There's a level of intensity that I feel when I see these characters enraged. She also uses cross hashing to bring it to the next level. And it's not just mad faces. As I said, she draws all sorts of facial expressions really well. Mad, happy, or sad. Another thing that she does really well are the establishing shots. The scale of these are massive. And the way she achieves this is by having people included so that the viewers can see the size difference more clearly. And on top of that, she has the horizon line low, so that makes us look up at the buildings rather than from the top. The intricate details also help in achieving the right type of vibes to the place that the story takes place in. Take, for example, the main classroom. Since the extra side of the school that the main cast of characters are usually in is secret and kept hidden away from the rest of the school, you would of course expect it to be a bit dirty and run down. Or take Shami's mother's store, which has all these intricate details at the top, which gives it an antique type of feeling. She has these amazing backgrounds littered all over the place, and it's quite a sight to see. As I mentioned in the previous segment dealing with her illustrative work, Rin manipulates fire, so to fix the lighting and color on whatever that's around it, and in her inked work, she still does an amazing job in showing that effect. Since we're dealing with pen and ink, conscious is very important in conveying how fire is drawn. Wherever the flame is coming from, you see very thin and light line work, while anything obscure gets heavy dark shading. 
And just like how she uses hatching to add intensity to the faces she draws, she also uses it to add intensity to the flames. We really feel the destructive and erratic nature from the fire by how she draws it. Overall, Kazuhi Kato's colorful painting style, her amazing backgrounds, detailed expressions, and just her line work in general are all testaments that show how great of an artist she is. I didn't mention any evolution in her style, because besides a few minor touch-ups, even prior to her working on Blue Exodus, it's been pretty consistent with her art style. Blue Exodus is still ongoing however, so who knows, there might be a major difference by the time it's finished. If you want to show some support, you can always buy the manga volumes, or if you just want to look at her amazing illustrations, you can always get the Iro Iro art book. She also has a Twitter that you can follow if you want to see her day to day life if you want, so you could go and do that. Hey guys, I just want to say thank you for watching this rendition of Artist Analysis. Um, a lot of people have actually really liked these videos and um, as I mentioned in my previous video I think that um, there's been an influx of subscribers that um, actually really like these videos so um, it's definitely have motivated me more to make more of this type of video and I guess video essays so um, yeah I look forward to seeing more of these. Um, I'm almost at 100, I might do a mini celebratory video for reaching 100 subscribers. It's not a lot, it's nowhere near 1000 or 10,000 or 100,000, but um, it's uh, it's something that means a lot to me, considering that I have been pretty inactive with this YouTube channel for the longest time, but now I start to get a love for it, so um, yeah. Thank you guys for whoever that's watching, whoever that will be watching in the future, and who's ever sticked around from the beginning. Um, I know who my next artist is, and I know I've been getting requests for artists to do for these videos, and I definitely will get around them. They're definitely on the list, but um, I still have a few artists that I just want to tackle before I get to any suggestions. So um, yeah, thank you though for any suggestions that people are giving me. And people that do some information checking if I missed any things about this particular artist. So, um, thank you. I do appreciate it. Um, yeah. And like I said, thank you for watching this video. And I will see you in the next one.